All right, guys, so I am down in Florida training uh, with Sonny Pazikas and with Andrew Smirsek. Uh We're going to have an interview with them, ask them some questions about the background, where they see themselves in the training world, coming right at you. Sirs, introduce yourselves, please. Sirs, I, I like how it starts. Uh, Sonny Puzika is here uh, from Russia via Texas, visiting my old home state of Florida. Used to live here. Uh, first time here training at Andy's place. And uh, I just uh, explorer of all things violent. Uh, I enjoy doing that. and. Uh, teach on a few topics here and there. This weekend we're covering a little bit of a pistol work and I believe today we fired all of 30 rounds mm -hmm. on one day of pistol class. So yeah, yeah, we're rolling, man. We're rolling. <laughs> and you've been on the channel before, but should you introduce yeah. yourself, please? So, uh, I'm Andrew Smirsek, owner of Combat Art Training and we do classes and nylon gear. Uh, got a oriented training. So um, we do do like taking a lot of beginners but i would consider all of our classes advanced okay and yeah so my background uh you know military then taking a whole bunch of classes since then and uh you know if you watch max's channel you probably know several of the people that i trained with and i mean so uh i first found out about sunny through james yeager Mm -hmm. um, he was one of those people that James always said, if you get a chance to train with him, because he thinks differently from all the other instructors in the business. Yes. Um, and then uh, I got the pleasure of staying with you in Camden um, and had a chance to talk with you and have some conversations. And I immediately decided, okay, well, I'm signing up for that class. You got attracted to me, right? Yeah, absolutely, immediately. <laughs> it happens it, 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 it was the eyes. It yeah, was the so eyes. I know, I know. I'm magic, magic, magic <laughs> movement on my eye, eyebrows and stuff. Um, and then as a, as a side bonus, I, I've trained with you before uh, in Camden SRF. I was able to take patrolling the homestead, and I uh, got to take your um, rifle accuracy and pistol skills one. Uh, so pistol skills one and marksman. Marksman, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and both classes were fantastic. Um, both classes in different ways pushed my comfort zones, showed me new things, taught me new things. I was able to shoot farther consistently than I ever had before, oh, for sure. Um, you know, getting the idea of what I could do with my rifle, especially if I put in the time necessary to get better with it. You were bragging this morning that you fired AK at 250, I did, right? I was very happy with that. I I was ecstatic with that. Um, <laughs> what, what, whether I should time, or not. Yeah, first time shooting an AK beyond 15 yards, 25. Right? Yeah. 25. Yeah. 25. I shot. I you, 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 you then X'd it, basically. Yeah, like, like literally the, la the other, only other AK... Well, no, I fired an AK maybe probably seven or eight years ago like uh, mm -hmm. but but i also was able to shoot an occam at 25 mm -hmm. um you know and and that was an experience that's a quality right immediately right. double tapping the first the first trigger but ball. of course <laughs> 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 like like it, it was told you're gonna double tap this it's okay <laughs> and like what the fuck just happened <laughs> um but so as much as you have pushed me mm. with the two classes i took they're both one-day classes. Guys, if you have a chance, Aries Training Facility is fantastic, um, which is where we've been doing all the training. But then today with you, with all 30 rounds that we shot, um, I was in deeper water than I have ever been up till now with my training. Okay, well, I guess this is, this is your video, right? And we're recording this for you, but... I, I, you know, I, I want to know for my own benefit, right? When you say deeper water, what do you mean by deeper water? Uh, out of my comfort zone, um, push past my, push past my comfort zones. Okay. Whether, whether it was through the instructional at the beginning of the class, whether it was through the movement, 
um, the little like touch taste of combatives, which I, which I've done some of, but the whole idea of moving in because all I've been doing with my dry practice and my dry fire is moving away, creating Shelf, space. Create, create yes. Distance. Create space, create distance. Um, and I think I had said to you when I saw you in Camden that there was this one video you did where you did this simple thing of stepping in and I was like, holy shit, because it, Everything that that I've been taught to that point is, is is move, get away, find cover, um, uh, you know, shoot the gun, shoot the gun, <laughs> like like n- never at any point had someone said, okay, well, there's this other direction, there's this direction that that's forward, um, and, and it, that little snippet five minute video was like, holy shit, you know, because it's just not something I that had occurred to me. You know, and, and, and this is this is maybe an uncomfortable observation for most folks to hear, but no matter what it is, it, it has to be said. You know, the, the reactive fighting with the creation of distance and, and, and establishing some kind of space between you and your belligerent, it's, no matter how I dress it up, it's, it's it basically what it is, it's a fear-based response. Mm-hmm. You know, and every time you mention fear, most dudes react with this like, "Did you just call me a coward?" You know, what I mean, they, they have this almost like visceral reaction, like you just insulted me. Right. right. Yeah. If you feel that way, I mean, be my guest. I really don't care. It doesn't matter. Here's the thing. You know, this is this is this is denial of high order. You know, dudes deny that they have fears, and it's kind of like. You know, this is how people get to terminal stage four because they deny to themselves that things that I'm feeling, things that I'm seeing, symptoms of happening, that something may be happening. Some right. oncological yeah. disorder, right? Until it's too fucking late. Yeah. You know, and, and, and with fears, you know, people are, there's, there's this, this thing that, you know, we are afraid, so we have a fear of admitting to ourselves that we have fears. Which is slightly ridiculous. It's it's kind of childish. Yes. You know what I mean? It's it's like on the on, on, on the infant level kind of stuff. But as I told you today in the class, you know, absolute majority of dudes in this in, in this field of what we do, let's say today and what we're gonna do tomorrow, which is training with firearms, it's it's like infants with the chainsaws. You know, they haven't discovered who they are, but they're working with very dangerous tools. You know, they don't know shit about themselves. They don't know whether their limits. They don't know how to push themselves. They don't know how to deal with true stress, sustained stress, not just short term. You know, and and everything is going to be resolved through this magic tool that's going to have 17 plus one and uh, and this red dot and this light and this kind of stipling on the pistol grip and this kind of replacement trigger and this do that and then end up you looking at the three thousand dollar Glock and you go like, what the fuck is this? You know, and, and he has very expensive chainsaw, but his skills in comparison to his three thousand dollar Glock, he's a he has a dollar twenty worth of skills. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and that's his skills and training environment converted into combat currency. He has about two quarters worth of combat application money. Right. right. I mean, and a three thousand dollar chainsaw. There's this disparity, you know, but everybody wants to do what? They want to go out there and talk to steel and to hear the steel talk back. You know what I mean? There's pleasure in that. There's orgasmic experience, exchange happening there, you know? And uh, and when you torture yourself to find your own freaking suck in so many different areas, there is no orgasm there. You know what I mean? It's just a limb dick syndrome day after day for years. Right. You know, because you're finding shit that you... You don't want to know you have, but unless you find it and you diagnose it, why you have what you have, you can't fix it. That right. disease cannot be healed. So, I, I, you know, I'm not anti-gear. I'm not anti-gear. I'm not a gear whore, but I see a beautiful gun. I see a great work. I see great custom work and all that stuff. I'm, I'm just an attracted, just attracted to it as most normal dudes are attracted to a beautiful woman. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna be a slave to that. Right. And I'm not going to spend money on that, even though I may have enough money for that. I'm going to invest my time and, and resources into learning more, understanding more, getting to know where I suck. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to make the difference. How I swing the chainsaw, not what kind of chainsaw it is. And one of the things that you had said today, so uh, we had <clears throat> Jesus in our class. Yes. Which was, which was a wonderful experience. Yes. Um, who had trained with you how long ago? 
So I think last time he trained with me was 2006. So that's like 18 years yeah. ago. Yeah. And and you straight up said that you're not the same instructor you were then. Your curriculum is, even you said, even up to a year ago. Yes. There are things that you have realized or changed or modified or matured. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, that, that there... There is a humility in that, and you talked about that today too, a little bit, of like you're always trying to change, trying not trying to change, but trying to better yourself. No, I, I think you know it, it's not humility. I think it's self-realization, because humility sometimes you know when, when you make a statement of humility, that of itself is a prideful statement. Okay, you know what I mean? I'm making with pride. I'm announcing to the world how humble I am. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's, it's it's very contradictory by nature. But I think it's 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 it has to become a process to where you start finding purpose and joy, to a certain degree even joy, in exposing more and more of where you suck, not where others suck, where you suck. And, and it becomes, man, it becomes like this, you know, like like us men joking, we say, you know, when we start our day, it's shit shower shave, right? Mm-hmm. Shit shower shave push up. You know what I mean? And then throughout the day, I need to find out where else I suck. Right. And it could be physical. It could it could be something that has absolutely nothing to do with the physical. You know what I mean? My mental or my emotional reactions to certain stimuli. You know what I mean? Why I'm being triggered by something. Why something pushes me. Why someone mentions my name on the internet and they show the video which, of which they have no clue what's the context of that video. Why am I triggered by that fool from California or Oregon? Who means England, nothing to you. Who means nothing to right. me. We're never going to meet. He's never going to train, train with me. I'm never going to take his money. And I'm not interested in meeting that dude. Right. You know what I mean, so you're finding yourself these triggers, and you understand that these triggers are are just the symptoms of certain other weaknesses that you have. And and you know how 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 to put the finger on that button? What the fuck is it that's wrong with me? Right. You know, it, it it becomes often itself entertaining that search of your own suck, so I can find it and kill it. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 I think if dudes invested more time into training themselves versus learning a new trick acquiring a new toy a new weapon and again i'm not anti-new gear or whatnot you know but that is you know the, the recent example i gave in one of my short videos it's like you know if you ever been to cities like mumbai in india or calcutta in india or or, or dhaka in bangladesh right or, or cairo or alexandria in egypt or karachi in pakistan and you drove in the traffic in those cities. People have no idea no. what's going on. There is no traffic lights. There is no, no rules. It's, it is chaos. There, it's absolute chaos. You know what I mean? And if you think that you can make it through there during the ice storm, although they don't have ice storm, but imagine yourself in that city during the ice storm. It's bad Sideways enough. driving yes. snow, and you have a legit emergency. You right. have 10 minutes to get to somewhere so someone can save you because that's how bad it is. Would you pick the guy who's never driven in such chaos, but he owns a Ferrari? Or would you pick the guy with the used clanky Toyota Corolla, but who's been driving there for 20 years? 100% the Corolla. Right. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of dudes that I see coming to so-called training, they bring in Ferraris. Yeah. You know, and, and that's fine if you've done the time, put the time in to be able to run the Ferrari. There's nothing wrong with it. If that. you can run Ferrari in Karachi right. streets, my hat is off right. to you. But if all you know how to drive Ferrari and Autobahn, you're not ready for yeah. Karachi. You're not ready for Kolkata. You know, and, 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 and dudes think that standing there in front of static target and doing your quick magazine dumps with your latest, greatest optics and this and that, and, and three thousand dollar device here and six hundred dollar flashlight there and, 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 and your helmet and another fucking sixty thousand dollars mounted on your helmet of night visions plus thermals plus this plus communications and all that stuff. And I'm looking at the dude who cannot hold a plank for 45 seconds. Right. <laughs> I'm looking at the dude that has absolutely zero skills on the groundwork, in the ground game. I'm looking at the dude that would probably have a skid marks if I pulled out a live blade on him. With intent to use it. Your priorities are fucked. Yeah. You have to fucking truly, truly to revisit your soul. <laughs> right. You know what I mean, and and, and 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 this is here. Here's the funny thing, man. I'm not looking at infants. I'm looking at grown ass men. 
that claim themselves to be alpha personalities, alpha individuals. They have, they're full of pride of how they rule their world, how they made themselves into who they are and all that stuff. But they have no self-discipline or for the lack of a better term, balls to look into themselves. Right. <laughs> well, it, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's a it's dichotomy. Not, it, and it's not easy. <clears throat> no, no one said it's at easy. At all. No. No, but but no. the reality is, if you're not able to look at look at yourself and at least at least identify what you need to work on, mm -hmm. then you really haven't started your journey. You're cheating yourself. Yeah. You're, you're doing a cosplay and you're lying to yourself. And you know, lying has a very interesting effect. You know, when they say liars eventually become pathological liars, and the meaning of that is they no longer themselves can recognize right. what is lie and what is the truth. Yeah. It's truly pathology. Yeah. Okay. I know people like that. I used to be married to one like that many years ago. You know what I mean? And uh, and I know people in the industry that are like that. And, and it's and at some point, probably most of us have done steps leading in that direction, right? Mm -hmm. To avoid unpleasantries, to avoid conflict, to avoid directly confronting, you know, so to speak, your what's in your closet and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. so, so you lie, you, you omit, you do this, you that, and you think it's going to become easier. Has it ever become Never. easier through lying? No, it always gets you deeper into the yeah. shithole, <laughs> and it takes longer time, and it makes bigger mess to try to clean it up. Yeah, when we're children, you know, our parents will tell us, like, if you I lie to me, out. it's going to be worse. And I will find out, no and, matter how you yes. hide it. And yeah. we do as parents, as you yes. know. We do find out. Yes. So where do you see yourself? Like where do you, where do you see yourself? Like your purpose. My at the, purpose at this point in the training community. You know, I I in some way I wish that I could say something very profound. <laughs> and 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 very meaningful, where people would go like, "Wow, man, that was deep." No, there's nothing deep like that. I think where I am right now, my purpose is to welcome people that are ready to face how bad they suck. That often itself is a, is a very, very big achievement to face your suck. And I will refer to that as my purpose is to gather up and take it to a different depth, people who are adults in the martial lifestyle. They're not just adults in the years with their bodies, with their facial hair mm -hmm. and, you know, hair on the chest. Adults in martial lifestyle. They have grown up as fighters. Not necessarily that they were in the rough streets and doing the gangbanger bullshit and all that stuff. That they matured enough in here to understand that pressing the trigger is the easy part. Right. They have understood that, you know, thumping your chest and acting tough does not win the fights or doesn't impress really bad mofos. You actually look funny when you do that. They have grown up to understand that learning to avoid the fight is much more valuable than learning to end the fight. Right. They understood that there is no orgasmic feeling, elation, or big bragging rights when you take someone's life, but you come to the realization that you haven't done even 50% of what you could have done to avoid it to escalating to that point. You said something today. That, that that hit me, the idea that, that I'm trying to give you every opportunity I can to save your life. Yes. And and and, and it's not a check mark, man. No. You cannot take it easy where you go like guy confronts me about something. Hey, you looked at my girlfriend's ass, right? And my de escalation approach is the fuck I did. She's ugly. Mm -hmm. That did did not you just de-escalate anything? No, you very... Did or did that just became, yes. we're about to spill blood. I don't know whose blood, but blood will be spilled. Yeah. Right? And, uh, you know, so 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 this is not just about being cool and how you respond, right? right? I, I hear in the classes where people go like, yeah, just do that, just kind of, you know, backhanded kind of shit, you know what I mean, and walk away. He's not going to let you walk away no. if you say something like that. 
Would you? Especially if his girl heard yeah. it, and now he also has not has his chick pressure, especially if he's a younger guy and his girl is not a mature woman yet, doesn't understand yeah. the consequences of what escalations can lead to and all that shit. But he has a couple of buddies. Now he has, there's a peer pressure. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now he's younger, bigger, stronger. He has peer pressure. He has chick pressure. You are older, heavier, not as fast, and the only thing you have on you is a gun. Through your words, you just made yourself guaranteed to use your gun because there's nothing else you have right. to stop this guy. And you certainly did not use your fucking mouth in the right way. If all you have it. is a hammer, you're going to use And now all you have a hammer, and now him and his buddies will become nails. Right. Okay? What did you win? Besides ending up for 20 to life with Tyrone and Bubba. Yeah. You know what I mean? And your ass will be loose after those 20 years. Really fucking loose. What did you win? You took lives, and it's your fault. Yeah. What, do you think you're going to be high-fiving with your buddies after you walk out after 20 years if they release you early or whatnot? No, you're not going to be high-fiving. You're probably going to whack yourself. Because by then, you're going to mature mature enough. You're going to understand a little bit life, and Tyrone and Bubba will help you to understand life for 20 years. You know? And in that time, you're probably going to learn that that Johnny kid that you shot, you know, he was engaged to this beautiful woman, okay, and they, and she was pregnant. Right. You know. Yeah. And that affected so many lives down the road, Ripples all because of your fucking pride. Yeah. You couldn't say something like that, like, "Hey, buddy, I, I have to admit, your girl is, she's heat, she's beautiful." Okay, I was not looking at her. Maybe my eyes stopped on her, beautiful curves, wouldn't yours? Did you just complimented his woman? Mm-hmm. Yes. Did you at the same time respectfully apologize? Yes. Mm-hmm. Was that a de-escalatory? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? How much does it take? How much did I have to lower myself to actually be sweet and compliment the woman and to take down his level of agitation and, and, and all that stuff? I go home, he goes home, she goes home. Nobody died. Yep. Is it worth learning that stuff? Yes. <laughs> Yet, I put out the class on conflict management, which is a very involved eight-hour class. I have two sign-ups. Next day, I'm teaching the class on team tactics with the pistol in the low light while fucking jumping over the, yeah. you know, over the top of the car while throwing a Spetsnaz shovel. Yes. Sold out class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I told him, I told him we, were, we were in the grocery store earlier today after, after the first day of class, and I said, I didn't know... I saw these pictures of you, Jerry, Jay, Gary. If you don't know who these people are, go fuck yourself. Anyway, (laughs) um, like I saw the picture after the muster. Um, If you haven't been to the muster in PA, you should go. Um, And I didn't understand what I was seeing. I thought you guys had gone out to dinner. I was like, oh, that's a shame. And then Mike says to me, Mike Fior, again, if you don't know who it is, go fuck yourself. Um, (laughs) says to me, dude, like, why didn't you stay for the de-escalation class? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? He said, yeah, the class that Sonny put on the day after the muster. Yeah, full, he eight, said, full he eight said, hour class. He said, you could have stayed. I said, I thought you guys were going to dinner. He said, no, 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 The next day was a class. And the people that are in it were me, Jay, Jerry, Gary, <laughs> role-playing, de-escalation. Motherfucker. Fucker. I told you, the last scenario, <laughs> the, the last scenario we created was actually... I think Jay was the manager who was firing Jerry, and Gary was the one who ratted on Jerry to Jay. It had to be hilarious. It was. It was excellent, man. <laughs> it, it was powerful because you know they 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 all, all all these dudes are dudes that that have mileage. Yes. And 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 and, and time. Yeah. In life, you know. And it was a beauty to watch. Yeah, you know I what believe I mean? it. The, the whole things that we learned in prior seven hours, and then they how they manipulated the game and and and, and pushed the limits and then gave yeah. space. You know, and, and when I explain in, in conflict management, you know, there, there there's two extreme dangers. One of them is giving too much space for a person who started escalating for him to become unrestrained bully, and that's submission. You right. become submissive. It's very dangerous because, you know, like I told you today, right? Yeah. When you asked, I said, never start any of those things with, I'm sorry. Right. 
because you just put a red carpet for a bullet to walk right over you. Right. You know. But another thing is is you don't find you don't find the middle ground of controlling the situation. You either submit or you try to force. You know, and, and most dudes they jump from one to another. They try to force because their ego comes out and all that stuff, and then they see that this is becoming truly serious, and the guy is foaming at his mouth, and he's pulling the knife, and there's murder in his eyes, and they never faced anything like it. Right. Because now this is real. This is real. Yeah. It smells like it. It feels like it. It sounds like it. It's no longer a game. It's no longer force yeah. and force scenario. He has murder in his eyes. Okay. And then immediately the coward comes in. Yeah. You know, and then it starts submission. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then it's Dude, too late. you already pushed yeah. it so far. Now is the knife of the long knives. Yeah. You know what I mean? And off we go. It's a skill. It's like working muscles, like learning to play tennis or swing the baseball bat or, or, or throw a football or play ice hockey or, for that matter, roll on the ground, do jiu-jitsu. Right. You know what I mean? That, that, that verbal skill. And it's not just verbal. It's body language. It's body positioning. It's facial expressions. It's position. It's, it's changing the pitch of the voice. You know what I mean? I was fortunate enough to work with actors when I was doing well, some stuff in the movie industry. Yeah, I mean, Mike yeah. basically said like it was basically an acting class. It was. Yes, yes. That, 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 that is literally how, how Mike described it. He said it was, it, it was, it was an eight-hour acting class. Yeah, you know, and, and I had chances to, to, to sit with people like Armand Desanti, you know, to, with, with people like, like <sighs> some great actors, you know what I mean? Some, some great actors, and Lance Henriksen, you know, the guy, he's best known for playing Bishop in Aliens. Yeah. You know, but he's, he has done some amazing roles in Millennium yes. and many other fucking yes. things, you know. Amazing people that became friends of mine through you know, working on certain movie projects together, you know, and sitting there and then, you know, I had blessing to, to, to kind of like interrogate them about, you know, how do you present in this dialogue or even this monologue within this scene in the movie that's in the script written, how you make this shit alive. Right. You know, and when you're talking with someone like Lance, who's 80, in 80s right now, you know what I mean, with, with amazing career and amazing list of movies that done and, and, and trained other actors and all that stuff, Man, the wisdom that you get from these guys, it's like its like having a chance to sit down if someone just gets into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if you had a chance to sit down with Helio Grace. Hands of Grace. Hands yeah, of Grace, yeah, right? Yeah, the yeah, father, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He's dead. You know, yeah. God rest his soul, right? But if you had eight hours to sit down with him. Or Hickson or any of them. Right? Yeah. Or, or, or I, I don't know, if you're playing soccer or otherwise in the rest of the world of South America, it's called football, you know, you get to sit down with Pelé and Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Right, or if you're in the basketball, you sit down with Scottie Pippen. You don't want a Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen in the same room. But you know, let's bring back, <laughs> let's bring back Kobe from that other right. side and, and Michael Jordan, right? And you sit down and you have a free reign to ask questions about playing the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, you know what I mean? So sitting down with people like that, like especially Lance Henriksen, because we did became close personal friends. It was awesome, you know, because he he really just. He wasn't teaching me, but he just gave his explanation, his views, how he makes those scenes alive. You know, and that, uh, watching I got, him I got, work, I got man. to sit down in a car with the two of you for an hour each way. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be as much of a sponge and suck up as much as I can. I sit behind them, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to suck up. Yeah, we, but, but. <laughs> the Spetsnaz dude behind us. Dude. Right, exactly. <laughs> Not Spetsnaz dude, a, a tomato farmer from Texas. Yes. <laughs> um, like, being able, because, cause Andrew, you have, a, you have a wealth of training. Like, your resume, the amount of training you did in the last three years is pretty impressive. Well, thank you. Um, and, and the amount of teaching you've done in the last three years is pretty fucking impressive too. Um, and being able to sit with you two in a car an hour each way, like I feel privileged to be sitting in that seat, listening to the two of you going back and forth, discussing things. No, well, I mean, you know, you know? I, a, a lot of conversations, a lot of things and interactions that happen outside of training, prior to training. Yes. That's some of the greatest value. I remember when I was attending a lot, bunch of classes and seminars with people that taught me, you know, my instructors, my guides, my, my, my coaches. You know, when you have, you know, it, it was really like a Christmas gift. You know what I mean? When I would go like, and, and one of the instructors would go like, hey, come over to my hotel room. 
after training. Yeah. And right. I'm there until 1 a.m. drinking yeah. vodka. And, 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 and I get to really, really, like, like dig deep into yeah. his brain. Yeah. Open the gates that he forgot he had crossed 15, right. 20 years ago. I mean, ask questions that he takes it. For him, it's like moving the fork while he's eating mm -hmm. the, you know. Right. For him, it's so natural. For me, it's undis un you know, undiscovered territory. It's, right. a, it's, it's a dark world that I've never seen before. For, for me, it was like doing stuff like that with like uh, Jerry, Lewis, and Jay. That, like, like yeah. the things they were telling me about training with you, and then also when I trained with Gary, him showing me some things that he learned from you, I was like, oh, shit. You know, it's funny, like, um, we were talking about before, but right? anytime... Someone said, like, oh, you need to train with Sonny. And I was like, okay, uh, what are his thoughts? Like, dude, they're awesome. Like, the least descriptive <laughs> explanation <laughs> as to why you need to train. I'm just a sexy man, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, um, you know, what, what I would say is, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm planning on signing up for uh, the Gospel of Violence podcast because, like, a lot of what we did today was like lecture portion. Yes. And so like if you're, you know, I know you are enjoying listening to Sonny right now. Um, listening to him lecture in class, it's kind of like every moment you want to hear the next thing he's going to say. Agreed. And, um, and then also just breaking down in detail the way you do everything. And... The purpose behind different. it, the background behind it, why you did it, yeah. how you fucked it up, how you improved it. Well, you know, and, and here's the thing, right? I, I told you in the class, and I say it all the time to my students and my friends, you know, I, I'm a collector of quotes, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, right now, I cannot even say my top 10, because it would be more like top, top 1,000, right? Mm -hmm. So in the top 1,000, somewhere in there, probably in the upper end, uh, there is a quote that the why gives the substance to the what. Mm-hmm. Right, and and and, who said and that? I see that that's the thing. I don't know. Oh man, I don't know who said that. So half of the half 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 of the quotes that I use in my classes or in the book that I'm writing or, or other things, when I know whom to give credit to, I give the credit, and and if it, I don't know, I just say author unknown or origin unknown. Right. Yeah. Because it is what it is. Right. Yeah. You know, and I found out over time is that a lot of dudes in our industry they will basically teach with an attitude, I'm a former this and that, insert yeah. the letters, insert the unit, insert yeah. the whatever, or insert the experience, I've been to Fallujah, or I've been to Afghanistan, or I've been to Chechnya, regardless whatever. of the country. This is not specifically just like, say, American military personnel, right? Anywhere in the world. Brits, Israelis, South Africans, Russians, same shit everywhere, right? And I'm like, if you cannot sit down and explain to people in comprehensive manner why you do what you do and why you think that shit that you are suggesting for them to try out and experiment with, why it makes more sense than other things that they do. And if you're only pushing, I'm former Delta, and this is the way. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. It's I'm sorry, dude. You are devaluing the substance and the importance of your student's intellect. You're even developing. That is, that you're is, even that is disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah. That is disrespe if yeah. you disrespect your student, what quality of student participation you expect in your class? Right. right. And it's also, like you said before, you know, like, well, that's, you know, my team, well, and like, what fucking what team? team? What fucking team? Yeah. 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 Yeah, if something happened now with all of us three, yeah, this would be a fucking dream come true, right? right. This is wet dream. Yeah. We all grab the rifle. I, 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 and, I've I, got the light. I'm sitting back and I'm just going to watch. Oh, so, 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 so you're just doing TikTok <laughs> Yes, video, right? 100%. Well, it's cool. perfect. Thank you. Got, I appreciate that. You got your pistol. There's two rifles in this room. Right. I have a pistol on me. So, yeah. Yeah. No, but but the reality is that most of the time in your life there will be no team, there no. will be no backup. It's going to be you, no. you, and you, and that's it. And it's also they're thinking about like best case scenario too. That's a that's a thing that I always think about when people um, describe like, okay, for instance, like oh, I'm just going to shoot him in the leg. Like okay, best case scenario, you fucking hit his leg, you don't get shot. And that fucking well, works. guys, here's the scenario. You watching this right now? You mm -hmm. see the size discrepancy between me and Andrew. Okay, here's how it starts. Andrew is drinking vodka. He's not. It's water. But imagine he's drinking vodka. And he decides that he just doesn't like Russians because of what's happening in Ukraine, right? Mm -hmm. 
and he's angry at me and we're arguing and he fucking just splashes all that vodka into my face which blinds me and then with his size and everything just fucking piles up on top of me right okay tell me how much training you've done to access your gun here right. and he's not just on top of me he's murdering me yeah okay yeah and his friend here decides to help him yeah okay show me your marksmanship right what does it matter what red dots you have? Yeah. Yeah. What does it matter if you have a Glock, a super duper thing from John Wick, or it's a fucking whatever that used to be $99 gun that everyone laughs about. High point. The high point. Yeah. It, none of that makes a difference. Exactly. And, and, and you hear on the news, shooting at a party. Like this mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. single yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in the idea that it's not going to happen to you, that you're going to have all the time in the world, that you're going to have everything you need, it is a fallacy. And here's the thing. The legal reality in this country, at least, just because he's on top of me and punching, is going to be a big question in front of the grand jury, the jurors, the judge, the lawyers, the prosecutors, the district attorneys, and all that stuff, yep. if my escalation of force was justified. God forbid you live in a city where you have a DA that's running on a, an yeah. anti-2A platform or anything. And some of you yeah. who are from the state of California, you live in the whole state, who that is just, just a rampant reality. Yeah. That's what you have. Or New York or, or, or Massachusetts Pennsylvania, or, or Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania for that matter, which is sucks. Because you go to the countryside Pennsylvania and it's more of a traditional values yeah. and all that stuff. But then you come to Pittsburgh, you come to Philly, you come to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's a different animal, right? Yeah. So, you know, where I live in East Texas, that's not something that we have to worry about because our judges, our, our sheriffs, our everything is very much on the, you know, traditional values, American understanding of constitution, you know, founding principles and all that stuff. But, you know, you, 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 you have to know where you live. And even then, There's no does, it, does, it, does it give me a moral right just to shoot the person because he tried to punch me in the face? Right. Okay. He's having a bad day. He lost a job. He found out his wife was cheated on him with his boss. Right? And uh, I don't know what else. He lost a job and uh, he's already three months behind on his mortgage. Mm -hmm. I would call it a pretty bad day. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he had a few drinks and then I looked at him the wrong way or he perceived it the wrong way and he's angry. Does that warrant me shooting him in the face? And you go like, so what? You're going to get pummeled? I think you should train not to be pummeled. Yeah. <laughs> but if that's what it takes, if you really honestly ask me at the end of the day, maybe. It might be cheaper. Maybe. Not just cheaper. Cheaper on this. Yeah. Cheaper on this. All, all the way around. You know, and, 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 and these are the hard truths to face because a lot of dudes will do the chest thumping and all that stuff. I'm not losing the fight. I'll do everything needed to win and all that stuff. And uh, they'll take 15 gun classes, they take six medical classes, and they have zero understanding of de-escalation, human psychology, how it works in conflict, pillars of violence, timing, you know what I mean? All, all, all these little things, you know, and, and understanding the rational, irrational issues, rational, irrational fears. What is he expecting when he comes to you? Hey, motherfucker, you just hit my truck, okay? You go like, the fuck I did. Fuck you, I didn't hit your truck. So you just called him a liar, and you basically told him that that to him, which he expressed, which is legit grievance to him, it doesn't mean shit to you. You think you deescalated anything? No. You know, yeah. so, so, so things like that, and I'm looking at these dudes worrying about what's the next greatest, latest thing they're going to put on their do that flat top of this gun, and oh, I'm also getting a scar, oh, I'm also getting, oh, you see the latest thing that this company came out with, oh, you see what Knight's Armament, whatever, I'm giving is out, you know. <laughs> and you're sitting sometimes surrounded by guys that been to wars, that been to fucking, you know, rough streets here and there, and you're talking about shit as gear. While you could have asked them, hey, buddy, so what is like your scariest experience you had when you worked undercover, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen guys with someone like Craig Douglas, right? Right. They asking him about gear. You sitting next to the guy who's one of the very few people you ever meet in your life has survived a gunfight inside the car. A gunfight inside the car. That, is, that is a shit sandwich. Don't you want to ask some questions? Yeah. Not just technicalities of what he's teaching in his classes, right? What's been going on through here? How did it affect you, right? 
I would say it's worth your freaking investigation and getting into the meat of the business and go like, how does a human survive that and how it changes his evolution as a fighter, right? As a professional in violent, you know, interactions, right? I would want to learn. Yeah. You know? But you see 20 dudes sitting around and they're asking him about, so what do you think? Do you like Holosun 507 or 509 better? <laughs> Fucking Google it. Yeah. When you have a resource of that caliber with experience of that significance, dude, use yeah. your brain what treasure you have in front of you and fucking dig in. Now, so what I talked to you about today in the class, you know, that's the holy trinity of, of, of learning and training, right? You got to have a good instructor. You got to have a relevant material. And you got to have a good student. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, everyone blames, oh, it's shitty material. Or bad instructor but then we look at the quality of the students mm -hmm. and what do we see most of the time consumers that are waiting to be spoon-fed information yeah. they don't even put a fucking homework to to, to 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 formulate legit questions that address specific issues of concern they don't do their homework you tell them to read something you've done it nah, 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 nah. I, I was on the phone and you know, and then I was watching the movie and then me and my buddies went out for a beer. So, and then it was time to sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, it's like, uh, you said, uh, you said earlier today that, you know, I would, but, mm -hmm. or, or because, because it's and, victimhood. We, yeah. we always blame something outside, not something within why we didn't do what we should have done. Why we didn't do that. It's good for us. It's not, it feels good, but it's good for us. You know what I mean? We've always been victimized by circumstances, other people, or decisions of others that interfered with our good intentions. We're never the perpetrators. You know, there's a saying, you know, people like to say that I'm a student of history, right? Right. There's three ways to look at the history. Observer of the history, victim of the history, and here's the tough one, perpetrator of the history. Yeah. Have you ever looked at the history through the eyes of Adolf Hitler? That changes things. Yeah. Pretty interesting light, right? No, yeah. yeah. But if you really want to study the history of Holocaust, you have to look through the eyes of Jewish right. folks who suffered. But they are looking only through the eyes of what? Victimhood. Yeah. Okay. Then you have to look at history as written or portrayed about what happened in Auschwitz and Buchenwald and all these other terrible places, right? right. That's observation is history. But how many people studied history through the eyes of Adolf Hitler? Right. It's scary fucking place to go. Yeah. Even um, even like thinking about that, like Hitler is more described as like it's it's not like you don't know that much about him with the typical things you hear about the Holocaust. Uh, you don't know like the way he grew up and the things what, he was going through. What he went through he went in World War One and and, and, yeah. and how things happened and how things evolved, you know, and, and all of a sudden. You know, and it's going to be something very hard to admit that you see the guy who's no longer just this mindless monster, but there were objective reasons why Hitler became what Hitler became. Right. And that's a scary proposition. Yeah. Now, if you like, look at it in violence, and here's this bad guy right. who comes at you with a knife. That's your personal Hitler. Right. Don't you think he may have objective reasons why he's doing what he's doing? Yeah, it could be mistaken identity. It could be really bad day or bad year in his life culminating today. Yeah. You know what I mean? How are you prepared for it? How are you prepared to face your personal Hitler? And if you don't study a fight through the eyes of the Hitler of violence, you're a fool. Right. You're a fool. You need to learn, you need to put on the black hat, be a bad guy, be a criminal. And study how these people think, how they work, how they yeah. become predators that they are, in order to understand how to do the opposite. Yeah. And in you know. role playing for Force and Force, I've had the chance to do it with Prepared Patriot North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, I made a commitment to myself that I want to get down to Camden because I want to role play for that class because it was, it was impactful for me. Um, and when you role play and being able to see everyone go through their decision making, and like you said, also seeing it from the other perspective. Um, I think some people have a really hard time putting that hat on, had a really hard time like looking through those eyes. Some people have an easier time looking through those eyes. I don't use role players in my force and force classes. I have students rotate roles. Okay. So you're playing a good guy 
and you're playing a bad, bad guy. guy. So you get to see both roles, not as a role player, but as an active participant. Okay. I think there is a great value in that to learn. You know, I see where impartiality of a role player can be a benefit, but I actually see more negatives in using role players versus using students in both roles and reversing the roles. Um, for you guys watching, talking about force on force scenario classes, like um, as we were talking in the beginning about de escalation class that involved role playing, this would be force on force that there are scenarios and they often inv involve guns. Yeah. Now, why, why is it um, that you don't like, you don't prefer to use dedicated role players? I think they're not vested in training. Okay. They are vested in experience. Yeah. Do you think they can be vested in training? I think most of them, they're not vested in training. Okay. They're coming in for an adventure. It's an amusement park. It's a day in an amusement park. Well, what about, um, because like... For I, most. Cause, not cause, all. Because for me, <clears throat> like for me... Yes, I, you, I, you may take it to certain level serious and all that stuff, but you don't have the rotation coming up to see yourself in the mirror from that different vantage okay. point. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And if you do, this is going to be three months later when you take the course now as a student and others are going to be role players. You don't know how serious or dedicated they are about role playing as right. much as you are. You don't know how vested they are. For them, it's just as it day of amusement to shoot some right. fools and get paid or get discount for my next class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I don't like using role players. And, and this is where, let's say, me and James and many other instructors differ. I do not use role players. I use my students and they rotate going bad guy, good guy, bystander, and on and on and on and on. Everybody well, gets I to, would be very interested. Everybody to gets take, to see that, that training. From, from, from vantage point. That, is, is that the way you're going to run the force on force? In Pennsylvania, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. I don't do much scenarios. Most of my force on force training is actually attribute and skill development. I believe scenarios are like sparring. They have to come very, very late in the training to pressure test acquired skills. So this is not going to be role playing to do this stuff. No, this is going to be role playing and, and the, the result is this. You sit here, she sits here, his gun is on his lap, mine is in his goalster. Go. Go. You both have one shot. And then we dissect why this happened, why you missed, why you were late deploying your weapon, what you could have done differently. Why did you focus both of your hands doing here? Why did you do not, instead of fucking, you know, going for your gun, why did you not you work on his form or the way he's sitting to make him unable to very quickly to point the weapon at you? Why didn't you focus on that first? Why didn't you focus on his hat obstructing his vision? Mm -hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Things like that. So I make people think outside of just grab the gun and press the trigger. Grab right. the gun and press the trigger. I'm like, you have to see the totality of the, of the violence, what is available, what is happening. There is water here. Mm -hmm. That's two weapons, water in your eyes and glass in your neck. Mm -hmm. I teach people when you go to a restaurant, never finish your glass, whether it's alcohol or any other liquid, because you have two weapons. Now you have only one empty glass. You ever had vodka, whiskey, wine in your feel eyes? Good. At all. And generally you can't see very well after it happens. No, because it's acidic. Right. It's acidic. You know what I mean? In UFC, you can see all the time, blood is acidic. Yeah. Right? Blood gets in the eyes, you're done. Yeah. You're done. And this is what I'm saying, you know, in training where people don't look at shit seriously, right? You see the guys and uh, they do, let's say, knife training, right? Mm -hmm. Training knife, training knives, not real blades or whatnot. And they do the sparring, touch and go, right? They slice you on the forearm. And the guy jumps back, retracts his arm and all that stuff. And I go like, dude, look at it like this. What he did to your arm, now this shit is can peel back and you see that color of your flesh is not the same color that you thought it looks like and this is about to go dead in two seconds but you have a chemical weapon an acid right here and instead of pulling back as soon as you got cut drive that shit right into his face and across his eyes because after this your hand is useless and if you haven't affected nothing in his operational capabilities you lost one weapon he hasn't lost anything mm -hmm. Make use of your injured flesh. You know what I mean? And people go like, that's savage. I go like, it's not yep. savage, it's logical. It's calculating. 
people don't look at it that way, you know. And and, and so when we were joking about, you know, fight like a girl class that I'm going to be yeah. teaching in Camden, you know. You know, fight like a girl is not per se a class for women. It's a class for when you are at disadvantage. It could be physical disadvantage. It could be a skill disparity. Maybe you're good at this and that, but this guy is outweighing you by 70 pounds. Do you think you can overpower him? Right. Try. See how it works. Would you want to be involved in the boxing exchange with Michael Tyson, even though he's 57 Fuck now? no. Right? Would you want to play with uh, Horian Gracie, although he's in his 50s? No. And play jiu-jitsu game? No. no, right? So you got to balance out your game. And fight like a girl, the whole concept of that is is how to minimize his advantages and maximize yours. Right. So it's not gender specific, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's things that I showed but, you but today, it's, how it, to work trachea, right. how to work other things around the neck. It's not just for women. But women, women, women have a better sense of their own disadvantages, their own, their yeah. own, their their own weaknesses. Their they own. do, but I will tell you something else. Uh, a lot of dudes seem to think that only men have egos. Um, no, women definitely do. Oh, yeah. women have egos. Yeah. Very strong, very pronounced, and very powerful. And a lot of women, and and ladies, maybe it's gonna sound like I'm criticizing women, folks. I don't. I love women. Well, I love one, three women. My two daughters and my wife. The rest of you, I <laughs> love you, but in a different way. Uh, <clears throat> women are very reluctant to face their pride. Okay. Sometimes more reluctant than men are. Yes. You know, and 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 these are historical, cultural inadequacies that been throughout culture been became part of the fabric of the societies. You know, and, and if we don't look at it objectively and sometimes say things that may seem like hurtful or insulting, then we're lying to ourselves and to people we teach, in this case, teaching women how to defend themselves. So in my class that I'm going to be teaching in Camden, it's going to be not pleasant things to hear for ladies, but also for dudes that will take the class. You know, and it's, uh, you know, there's in, in warfare there is a saying, there's two ways to fight wars, asymmetric or stupid. I teach in everything I teach, I teach asymmetric warfare. Explain that. If you go straight, I take an angle. Right. If you want to stand up, I go low. I don't play your game. I play asymmetric right. game. I'm not going to play in to your strengths. Okay. You want to bang heads, I'm going to present an elbow. Right. You present an elbow, I'm going to raise your elbow and I'm going to expose your ribs. These are just figure of speech. Right. It's not no, no, techniques. No, but, but, not but, 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 but you know what I'm saying? I am not going to play to your music. Right. You're going to dance my dance. And that's the art and the science of how to impose your will of what the fight is going to be. And sometimes you have to be cunning for it, especially for ladies. You look at Kramaga schools and all that stuff, push them back, kick them in the balls. Okay. So you 125 pound chimpanzee that just pushed back 260 pound gorilla and you're going to fight him and at at the long kick and long punch distance. Tell me how much sense does it make? None. Run. Would that teach that would you teach that to your daughter? No. Why is this being wholesale taught to women in self defense classes? Run if you can. But yeah. now she's in high heels. Yeah, uh -huh. she can. What is that man looking for? To fight the woman? No. What is he looking it's for? Like a rape or fuck. Or Control. Steal, yeah. Control. Which means he's going to want to have her work close. Teach her to be submissive until she gets close to his vitals. Now teach her to go fucking bananas. Teach her to sharpen her credit card. Teach her how trachea works. Yeah. Explain to her this, the, 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 the spinal vertebrae, the C-spine. Where's what, how to break it, how to dislocate that. Yeah. Explain how the jawline works. Explain what the orbital is, how to or break this. Or send her to you. So, no, it's, it's you know, this, this, this whole thing I really, you know, while, while I present it as a, as a women's self-defense class, fight like a girl, it's really learn to fight from, from the point of disadvantage. Right. Because you may be bigger, but you're not as fast. Right. Now, you, you may have 
know how to punch, but you know shit nothing about ground fighting and grappling and jujitsu. Right. You know? Now, um, you said women can have bigger egos. Do you find, I found personally that a lot of times they have a lot more confidence issues and they think their capabilities are much less than they are. Your light is on strike, man. It is. It's being very annoying. Is it controlled by Democrats? It could be. <laughs> Probably. Shit. Well, it's rechargeable, so, you know. You want to take a look at it? Because yeah, your video fine, quality is not going to be good enough without the light. It's actually not bad. We're good. You sure? Yeah. Okay. It's your video. iPhone. So if you're good with it. Yeah, we're good. But yeah. do you find uh, that women tend to have more confidence issues than men? I, I think it's a comp compensatory, comp compensatory, compensatory mechanism. I think women deep down, significant portion of women are not very confident. Yeah. For a good reason. And I think the, they do put that outward shield that reads like ego, but it's really, you know, like, like you hear sometimes a woman say what, you know, like, yeah, maybe I don't know how to fight, but when it comes to protecting my babies, Right? You hear women say yeah. that. I'll do whatever it takes. And I'm like, and what is it that you are capable of doing? Right. Mm -hmm. You are lioness without teeth nor claws. And you're only capable of roaring. And whom does it scare? It's not going to scare anyone. That's, it's not. That's, and it's unpleasant, and, and, and anyone and it's unpleasant to hear. And a lot of ladies will go like, yeah, allow me to kick you in the ball. See how you react. I have done it. I have done it. I have had women who have taken four years of Muay Thai training and I told them, here's my leg, kick me full force, break my leg. And it hurt. Did it diminish my capabilities? Not at all. And I said, but now if I'm that evil predator, I'm not only going to do terrible things to you, I'm going to do it after I open your trachea. Right. While you're still alive. Right. Because there are evil fuckers like that out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here's, here's a question for you. So, example, my daughter. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest her first class be to take from you? From me? Yes. Uh, escapology. I have a class, Escapology, which deals with movement, closing distance, workspace, and understanding of posture, positioning, and domination. Okay. It, we do not work on strikes. We do not work on knives. We include a little bit of weapon access, but that's just mainly for, you know, just familiarization. Uh, it's all about how position, angulation, workspace management, elevation, and movement can become weaponized. Okay. So escapology is hands down the first class if you want to get involved in combative world and know how to use your body and your limbs and... Other things, it's it's absolute must class. After that, there is a class called impactology, and it's very very unpleasant class because it's two days of dealing with impacts, mm. mainly receiving, not giving. Things that we talked about today. Mm -hmm. Most of you guys have not been hit enough, and that's where your reactions are all fear based reactions, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're still negotiating your fear of pain, of being struck, of being hit. After you've been hit thousands of times, sometimes by people that can truly hit, at first it starts on the body, eventually will move up to the neck and eventually to a certain degree to your head without protective gear. You know what I mean? You're never going to love it. Because if you do, you have some psychological issues, you know, or something more serious. So it's truly, you know, it, it's before you even think about impactology, you should definitely, definitely do the escapology and then talk to me, especially for ladies, before doing impactology, because our anatomy is different. Right. You have a productive organ, so you have other things, and uh, not to sound perverted, but when I start teaching people how to hit, we do go deep. Some of you will experience that, some of you tomorrow. So you can do the second video when you regain ability to speak. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why I had no interest in doing this after day two. Yeah. Um, and then for someone that just wants to come take a class with you, like, like they, they, they've, they've, they've watched this video, um, maybe they have taken a, a, a class, maybe they haven't taken a class, you know, what would you suggest?
pick up those brass balls of yours and just fucking do it. Right. Are you going to like it? I'm not the judge of it. Are you going to benefit from it? Absolutely. Is it going to be a benefit that's going to put a smile on your face? No, more of a grimace. For one, for few reasons. One, your world will get pressurized. You will find out in two days how much you don't know. But that's just the tip of an iceberg. Right. You'll find out how much work you're going to have to put in to find out other things that you don't know. You know, the world will open up. And, and it's going to seem vast. It's going to seem like impossible task, you know. But you took a first step on the journey that most people will never take because they don't have balls or unable to pick them up. You know, so regardless of your gender or whatnot, those imagine that those, you know, the, 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 the <laughs> you know, it's a figure of speech, balls, yes, yes, not your testicles, right? Pick it up and just get, you know, well, I, I, I'm going to come train with you after I lose so much weight or after I get in better shape. You never will. No. You'll never be you in never the right will. amount of shape. You'll no, never no, be no. in the right condition. No. You'll never be, just no. take the step. I, I've had world-class athletes coming and they all will say, well, fuck. Yeah. I thought I was ready. You know, it's individual. If you're coming in 80 pounds overweight, I'm not here in my class to kill you and make you a freaking cripple for the rest of your life. I'm going to work at your level for what is reasonable for you. Is it going to push your boundaries? Yes. You know, but as you know, already find out in the first day, we didn't do much physicality today, no. right? But it was headache-inducing mm -hmm. mental work. Yeah. Right? right. Because you had to reevaluate a lot of things and, and, and revisit your habits and revisit things that you dearly and for a long time belief and go like well shit yeah right and you know as they say i told you in the scripture you know when you start reading you know the the gospel by john right and in the beginning was the word <laughs> you know that's where it starts but as far as training man or lady <laughs> whoever you are you know it's it's what stands between you and your competence is your fear of failure yeah. We, generally speaking, don't take upon certain tasks or, or, or get engaged into something because we fear to fail. So let me break it down to you like this. Your mistakes and your failures are blessings because they are better teachers than I, I will ever be. So come in here, I'll help you to fail a lot and you will gain 60 new teachers because every mistake will be your very personal teacher. Okay? That's why I want you to fail, because I want you to gain different teachers speaking to you in different tongues about different issues. And there's way more costly ways to learn. And you know what? All we're doing is we're really breaking that which you consider your strength, which is your pride, which is just veneer. Mm -hmm. okay? And then finally, you're going to be able to look at yourself and see yourself for who you are. So finally, you're facing the real you. Now you can start fixing who you yeah. are. Otherwise, you're hiding from yourself. It's a fear of yourself. Yeah. You know, and it's pathetic. It's really pathetic because you have dudes running all these tactical classes and doing this. They don't know themselves who the fuck they are and what they're afraid of and where is their fear. You know, and, and, and they act like tough guys and, 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 and again, the gear talk, the, the this and that. And look, man, if you have all the money in the world, take that class, jump from helicopter and while doing the halo with the fucking night visions and thermals at the same time, shoot the fucking, you know, your, your, your bell fed machine gun suppressed, you know, more power to you. You know, likelihood of you having to do that in the lie in your real life, it's probably zero. Not probably. It is zero. It is zero. You know, but if you have all the resources to just experience the fun and exhilaration of that, more power to you. Yeah. Don't call that training, please. It's not. It's, it's entertainment. Right. It's expensive entertainment. And again, if you enjoy that and it gives you the kick, some people use cocaine for that. Some people use that. Yeah. I would rather you do that than use cocaine, you know. So, hey, mm -hmm. go to town, you know. But if you make a claim that you want to train and learn how to be harder to kill and and possibly if need be god forbid if it's you know encounter of that of those kind of parameters and those kind of metrics you know to 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 save other people's lives or god forbid you in in the hell of you know mass shooting in progress or whatnot <sighs> 
the high altitude, low opening night jump with the night visions and thermals with suppressed bell fed machine gun is probably not preparing you for what's happening in the hallways of the school. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So be realist, assess your life, where you where you live, what your life is like, places you frequent, where your loved ones work, live, go frequent. Do a little bit of assessment of what's going on, you know, criminogenic situation, how it's changing, how it's evolving, what has been happening. Look at people around, look at demographics, ages, sizes of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. What weapons used, what time of the day and all that stuff. And start making yourself like a priority list. What is the most likely thing that in my life, the way I live the lifestyle, that I may have to face? Right. Okay. Most likely, it's not going to be a night vision equipped <laughs> door kicking entry with your four teammates. I sincerely hope that's not what you're going to face because <laughs> at that point, <laughs> you know. You know, and most likely, it's going to have to do nothing to do with suppressed rifles. At the most, it's going to be pistol in your hip. Right. But most likely, it's going to start here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's that, you know what I mean? And, 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 and yeah, being punched in the face, neck being fucking stomped and neat and, and twisted and, and pretzeled and all that stuff, it's not as pleasant as shooting at the steel target. It's not, it's not that easy, pleasant, and satisfying by. exchange. Yeah. It's sweaty, it's stinky, it hurts. Sometimes your training partner overdoes it, and now you have a kink in your muscle and all that yeah. stuff, and you're like, fuck this, I don't want to do this again. Next day, you should be back and doing it again. Yeah. You know, persevere. You know, be steadfast in your in your in, in achieving what you need to achieve because that's what makes you a fighter. Once I get your this and that to become a fighter, I can teach you how to use tools. Right. It's not hard. It does not take that long. But until you become a fighter, man, you're an infant, and I'm just giving you a chainsaw of different power, different length different strength, different speed, different abilities. You're still an infant. Yeah. So don't be an infant. Don't be an infant. Grow up. Where can they find you? <sighs> <laughs> Do you even want to, like, like, this is always the classic James statement of, like, if you can't find me, then. But... Yeah, really, if you can't find this Russian guy <laughs> named Sonny Puzikas, because it's very common in Texas, you know. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of Sonny Puzikas is running around. With a experience of in, in former Soviet military that that live in in East Texas and been in few movies, I'm very hard to find and figure yes. out who I am. Yeah. But no, without you know making fun of people unable to think, it's sunnypuzikas.com. That's my website. Uh, I do have another website which is gospelofviolencepodcast.com. That's just for my podcast. Uh, I do have presence on social media on YouTube's, Facebooks. You know, a few other platforms, generally speaking, under the same name or forward training concepts or gospel of violence. And, and guys, as usual, I will put links below for all this stuff. Um, I appreciate you that. Know. So uh, well, I really... I'm in East Texas. I'm two hours east of Dallas, physical location. I have my private range. I have, you know, it's not public range. I can right. do what I want. We've used explosives, we've used destructive devices, suppressed weapons, other other things that we don't need to talk about. And I've had all kinds of interesting people training there from different entities, let's yeah, put yeah. it this way. And uh, I am not restrained by any rules in my location facility. Right. I'm not. I do what I want. That's why it's Ford Honey Badger. I, <laughs> Because honey badgers don't give a shit. Yes, and I take and I, give a shit. and I take what I want. <laughs> and you, sir? Where uh, can they find you? Combatarttraining.com. Combat Arts Training on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. And other stuff. Oh, yep. Again, we'll all be linked below. He has been gracious enough to host me here uh, for the week, um, which has been fantastic. It was great having you here, man. I really appreciate it. He is gracious because he's speaking, like, keeping not just me, but my whole family, my two kids and my wife. And uh, <laughs> now he's saying that I have to stay and live in Florida for a yeah, while. And, I like, and I'm like, <laughs> make me. <laughs> you miss Florida. 
least. for about for about a week. Yeah. <laughs> After a week, I'm ready to go back now, to Texas, dude, it, man. It's awesome you bring your family. Plus, Ashley doesn't make any friends, so you know she. <laughs> Same with Megan, man. We live in the country. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the closest town is 25 minute drive. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and we don't go out because we generally don't like to just randomly go out and interact with people unless it's our kind of people, our friends Indeed. that shared interests and all that stuff. So. You can say that sometimes it gets lonely, you know what it I mean? Does. So so coming out sometimes and meeting like-minded people, yeah. it's really cool, man. It's yeah, really, you know, I mean, that's why I enjoy sometimes, you know, we're sitting until 3 a.m. talking shit and you go like, shit, gotta wake up in three hours and teach the class, right? <laughs> I don't feel tired. After the class is over, I'm like, ah, yeah. shit, this is a drag. <laughs> But then tomorrow after class, I have to interview with Paul and then I'm assuming we're doing something yeah. filming for your channel, so, hey. Eh, eh. well, so, and also like, uh, you know, now it's like, because it does get lonely, but it's, it's, and I almost kind of feel spoiled because I basically only hang out with people like you now, you know, that's like a huge benefit to going into this. No, well, it's, 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 it's good, man. You know what, <laughs> you know, like John Willis says, right? He goes, you know, your, the frequency in your life is determined by people that you surround yourself and spend yes. time frequently with. Yeah. yeah. You're either giving or taking. Yes. Yeah. You know, I like to be hanging out with high, high, high quality individuals that have fucking intellectual honesty, that 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 have balls to look them about at themselves in the mirror and 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 face certain things and discuss it and have self assessment sessions where we can sit down and and be blunt about it. I like that. I think it's very much of a quality time that's beneficial for anyone participating. You know what I mean, right. instead of having like meaningless fucking social conversations or talking for three hours about fucking gear. Get out of my face, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So. So, guys, like, you should be searching out people like Sonny, like Andrew, to train with them. Um, they're going to make you better. They're going to make you stronger. So, check them out. Um, that's it, guys. Your path is out there. Go find it. Peace. Peace.